morning children hope all are safe stay home stay safe now in your mathematics syllabus we are into the second lesson that is cells okay let us go through that see here i have written uh, some series of numbers the first series 2 468 if you want to find out the next number it is very clear for you can you say which is the next number coming in that it is 10 how could you say that that is 10 because it is very clear from here these are even numbers okay 2 4 6 8 and the next even number is 10 so uh, this series of numbers is having a particular definition what is the definition that are the numbers belong to two a set of numbers called the even numbers okay now uh, let us come into this one 1 3 5 7 9 okay here also you will be able to say what will be the next numbers can you say what is the next number it is 11 okay here also you are able to write because you know this one the series of number belongs to which particular series and uh, this one you see 1 4 9 16 can you say okay little bit difficult no observe it carefully these are the squares of numbers okay 1 square is 1 2 square 4 3 square 9 4 square 16 and 5 square 24 so the next number is 25 so what do we observe here so these all are having a particular definition we know from which collection these numbers are taken okay let us also see another january uh, february march etc okay you will be able to say what is the next month what i want to write because these are the names of english months okay what will be the next month that is april okay na so in these all examples we are seeing that these all are having a special property follows a special property so if i write here only 2 4 6 6 okay you can uh, say that these are the numbers which belongs to this particular group are you able to say 2 4 6 6 so you can say that these numbers belongs to even numbers then so this is having a particular definition the even numbers which are less than or equal to 6 is it or not these are a well defined collection of numbers because we know that these numbers are even numbers particularly they are even numbers uh up to where less than or equal to 6 if i write like this etc okay there is not no ending any number we can write in this one okay now so if i write in this way this is called 2 for 6 which are the even numbers represent less than or equal to 6 then what is its definition these are any even numbers okay this is a collection of any even numbers but this is another collection of even numbers which are less than or equal to 6 so come to this one okay this one what are this this is also a collection of things okay so this collection includes any odd number okay these all are odd numbers but if i take like this 1 3 5 4 7 okay what are these this is also a well defined set well well defined collection that means what what are these these are odd numbers odd numbers less than or equal to 7 so like that 
this one. These are the squares of numbers. Or otherwise we can uh, write particular numbers out of this one. We can define in that way. Okay. We can uh, take a collection like this. Okay. This is a collection. This collection includes any even number. Okay. This is a collection includes any odd number. This is a collection include the square numbers. Or this is a collection. Okay. Now. Nah? This collection includes the even numbers less than or equal to 6. And uh, this one, the numbers, of the names of English months. Right. So, this type of well-defined collection of objects is known as a set. That only we have to learn in this chapter. Well-defined collection of objects. Okay. Okay, uh, so the set is a well-defined collection of objects. Is it or not? So, uh, it will be having certain properties. Set means all the objects in the set should have a common property. All the elements, all the members will be following that property. And we will be able to know whether a particular element is belonging to that set or not we must be able to say then only if you are able to say like that then we can call it as a set see here it should be possible to decide whether any given object belongs to the set or not suppose let me tell you uh, set of if i say set of even numbers set of even numbers is represented by A. A is equal to set of even numbers I set. And uh, let it decide whether the given numbers are belonging to A or not. Okay, see here. 2, 5, 6, 8, 10. Some numbers are given. So we have to decide whether these all numbers belongs to A or not. Whether 2 belongs to A? Yes, because our definition is set of even numbers. A is a set of even numbers. So, 2 is an even number. So, it belongs to A. And 5, what about 5? 5 does not belong to A. Right, because our definition is set of even numbers. So, 5 is not an even number. 5 is an odd number. So, 5 does not belong to A. And 6, yes, it belongs to A. 8 belongs to A. 10 belongs to A. So, out of these numbers, out of these numbers, what defines this um, set of even numbers, or otherwise uh, this property is A is equal to set to 6, 8 and 10. Okay, if you want to take A as the set of even numbers, out of these numbers, from this fact, we can get only those numbers. That means, 2 is an element, we will say like this, 2 is an element of A. Okay, we will say like that, 2 is an element of A. And 6 is an element of A. We can say like this. If it belongs to A, if it belongs to that particular set, we will say that it belongs. So here, what about 5? Like that all we can say. 8 belongs to A. 10 belongs to A. And all. And what about 5? Whether 5 belongs to A? No, 5 does not belong to A. This symbol represents does not. What do you mean by does not? Does not means not a member of. Why, why 5 is not a member of A? Because A is having the special property that it, it is even number. Understand? And one more thing. Set always represented by this symbol. Okay. Braces. This bracket is known as braces. Okay, it is always represented by braces and if uh, it, the object is a member of that group, we will say it by 
we will represent it by this group element and if it is not we will represent like this not an element okay understand so far we have learned that a set is a collection of well defined objects and we can represent the set by using the braces okay now so set can be represented in two forms one is roster form and another is set builder form okay let us see what is roster form and what is set builder form if i write a is equal to a e i o u okay it is clear that a e i o u are the elements of a particular set known as vowels because a e i o u are the vowels right so what did we do here we know that the vowels are a e i o u they are the vowels so we list out to those letters in the braces understand so by listing out the elements this each one is called the element each uh, member of that collection or if each object in the collection is known as the element so we are listing out to the elements here are you following so a e i o u are listed out so that only the roster form so if we represent a set by listing out to the members in it or the elements in it then we know, then we say that it is in the roster form okay if we represent a set to by listing the elements in it is known as roster form okay then what is set to build the form you know that a e i o u are the elements of vowels okay they are from a collection known as vowels so we can represent its property in the set so we will represent it like this we are going to say the property of it so what is its property x x is an element of that group okay na x for all x we say that such that x is a vowel x is a vowel so see here x is such that x is a vowel that means x is from the vowel group okay na these are every x is a member of vowels we know that how many vowels are there there are five vowels a e i o that we know already so if we say that a is equal to the set for all x this is called such that we can also represent it by uh, in this way also we can represent it okay now x such that x x is a vowel understand this is the set to build the form so if we represent the set by defining its property so it's a property x is a vowel of english alphabet that also if you want you can write x is a vowel of english alphabet so its a property is told so if we represent the set by defining its a property it is known as set to build a form okay so we can represent the set in two forms by listing out the elements or otherwise by saying its a property okay what it is known as such that okay we can represent in this manner also this one instead of this we can write like this also okay now so roster form or set builder form okay look at this set a is equal to set for all x such that x is a natural number smaller than 1 okay is there any natural number smaller than 1 if it is an integer okay there are integers smaller than 1 but coming to natural number natural number starting from 1 only so here it is told that smaller than 1 the natural number should be smaller than 1 
So is there any number belongs to this set? No number at all. So in a set, if there are no elements, in this particular set we can't find out any element. So if there is no element in a particular set, then it is known as a null set or a void set or an empty set. It can be said as null set, another name void set and another name as empty set. It can be represented by the symbol. This one is one symbol phi. Okay. Another symbol is this. Braces. Okay. Can you put zero inside this? Because we are saying that there is no number less than one. Means it is an empty set. There is no elements. Empty means it is represented by zero. No. So can we write zero inside this? No, because if we are writing 0 inside this one, 0 is an element, you know. So, this is the representation. Empty means only braces. Or otherwise, you can represent it by this symbol. Null set can be represented by the symbol phi. Understand? So, what is an empty set or a null set? A set which does not contain any element. Okay, a set which does not contain any element is known as a void set or a null set or an empty set. Okay, understand? Okay, look at these two sets. Set A. A, E, I, O, U. And set B. For all X such that X is an even number. So, coming to this set. 2 is an element of uh, this B. 1000 is an element of B. Or 998 is an element of B. Any even number is an element of B. Can you say how many even numbers are there? Is it fixed number? No. But coming to this one, you know that in English alphabet, there are only five vowels. They are A, E, I, O, U. We can't get any other number. So, this is a fixed number. Suppose if I write X such that X is an is a vowel of English alphabet. Okay, there is a set of English alphabet. I can write in this manner, it is lost or form, or otherwise I can write in this manner. So, here, what do we observe? It's a vowel. Vowel means any of the numbers from A, E, I, O, U. Any of the letters from A, E, I, O, U. It can be only five letters. But coming to this one, this number is not fixed. It is not countable. We can't count it. We can't say that how many uh, numbers are involving in the even numbers. Anything can be. Any number which is following the property that it is divisible by 2 is an even number. So that like that any number can be even number. No? So if you are able to count the number of, uh, if you are able to say that particular number of elements in that set, then we call that it is a finite set. And if you are not able to say how many elements are in that set, then we call it as an infinite set. Okay, so finite and infinite set. Finite means particular number of elements will be there. The number of elements will be fixed. And in infinite series, infinite set, the number of elements is not fixed. Okay. So finite set. If the number of elements in a set is countable, then the set is known as finite set. And infinite set, if the number of elements in the set is not countable, it's uncountable, then it is known as the infinite set. Okay, okay now let us learn another concept known as universal set and the subset. Okay, see here, A is equal to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Okay, from uh, this set, 
you can come into the conclusion that these are the numbers from integers, right? So minus one, minus two, minus three are the numbers taken from another set known as integers, right? Because integers are numbers starting from uh, we cannot say how much it is, we cannot say which is the least number of integer and which is the highest number of integer. So it uh, includes numbers, positive numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. and negative numbers like this. So from this, from this set only, we have taken this set. So this set is defined from this set of integers, right? Like that you see. This set 1, 2, 3, you know that this is a, uh, these are the numbers from natural numbers. So, from this set of natural numbers, set B is defined. So, a particular set is defined from another set. So, this is a big set. This contains, suppose this 1, 2, 3, from where does it come from? This comes from natural numbers. So natural numbers is a big collection of uh, objects. Okay. It contains a lot of numbers. So this one we call as universal set. Okay. This is a universal set of natural numbers. So 1, 2, 3 is only a part of that universal set. So we say that if we represent the natural numbers as n. Okay. N is a set of natural numbers. It can be any natural numbers. Then we can say that N is the universal set because, because it contains a lot of natural numbers. All natural numbers comes under this group. And this one B is a set from that universal set. So what is it? If we are able to define a set from a big set, the big set will be the universal set. So see here, B is only a subset of N. We call that it is a subset of N. Because B is defined from this big set. And also you can say that this natural numbers, natural numbers is a subset of whole numbers you can write. Can you write or not? And you can say that whole number is a set of integers you can write. And also you can write that integers is a subset of rational numbers you can write. So you can also write that this rational number is a subset of real numbers. So if I am writing like this, which is a universal set? Our real numbers is a universal set. Okay now. So from this one, if I write like this. Okay. From this you say, what is a universal set? This is a universal set. Because this set of numbers or the set B is defined from the natural numbers. Okay. So set uh, natural numbers can be taken as a universal set to them. Okay. Say here. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. It can be defined from the integers. Right. So here the integers. What are the integers? Integers is a universal set. And A is the subset. Okay. Because the set A is defined from this integers. And if you are taking like this. N. Is a subset of whole numbers. Because whole numbers contains in natural numbers also. Because natural numbers means starting from 1 to 1. Whole numbers starting from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And it is a subset of Z. Means whole numbers are including in integers. So, and Z is a subset of Q. Means the rational numbers. Because integers are included in rational numbers. And this is also a subset of uh, what is real numbers because real number including this rational number also so this is the symbol for 
subset and we can represent this universal set by the symbol u and also we can represent mainly not by u mostly we will represent it by the letter mu okay actually this is a representation for the universal set okay so a set which contains all the elements from which a particular set can be derived is universal set and the derived set is a subset for example a cricket team is participating from your school okay now so cricket team is selected for the competition the members are selected from your school only you know so all the students of your school is the universal set and the cricket team is a subset of that universal set did you understand clearly or otherwise a hockey team or anything okay so uh, otherwise 10th uh, class of your school if we say like that 10th uh, class from the 10th class one member is uh, getting um, what is some um, some prize or spell be prize spell be winner or maths be winner of uh, like that so, so from where the student has come it has it is from 10th class so 10th class from where the whole school so the spell be winner she or he is a subset of 10th class and the 10th class is a subset of the whole set the whole school are you understanding the uh, concept of subset and universal set so then the whole numbers total team total numbers in a particular set together that a big set we will call it as a universal set and the set which are derived from that we can derive a 10th class or a 9th class or any class we can derive from the school team okay or a cricket team or something so that derived team is a subset that big set that is a school that is the universal set okay let us discuss about this set a is equal to set a e i o u you. you know that there are five elements in this set okay so Uh, what are the subset of this set subset means any uh, element of this set or otherwise any two elements of this set or any three elements together or any four elements together or the whole set itself is a subset of it so if you want to write the subset of this set we can write like this a is a subset next e is a subset i is a subset o is another subset so the subset containing one element is this one okay again we can take two elements together so a e this is a subset a i is a subset a o is a subset a u is a subset like that any two terms we can take together no repetition again we can take sets of three numbers that is also taken as a subset a e i it is a subset i o u is a subset e i o is a subset and so on. then we can take a e i o that is a subset like this a like this etc a e i o this is a subset and do you know empty set is also a subset of the set empty set then means this one null set this is also a subset of m set empty set is a subset of all set any set you consider empty set is a subset of it and the set itself here the set itself means a e i o u that itself is a subset a e i o u is also a subset of this particular subset 
सो ये सेटी से सबसेट ऑफ इट्सर्फ एंड एमटी सेटी से सबसेट ऑफ इट्सर्फ ईच एलिमेंट इज अ सबसेट ऑफ इट इट्सर्फ एंड टू एलिमेंट्स तो कदा थ्री एलिमेंट्स तो कदा सो हाउ मेनी एलिमेंट्स विल बी देयर हाउ मेनी एलिमेंट्स कैन यू राइट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर वन हाउ कैन वी फाइंड आउट देयर इज अ फार्मूला 2 पावर n नंबर ऑफ सबसेट्स इज इक्वल टू नंबर ऑफ सबसेट्स इज इक्वल टू 2 पावर n वेयर n इज अ नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स सो हियर फाइव एलिमेंट्स आर देयर so five elements means 2 power n in this particular case is equal to 2 power n means 2 power 5 equal to 32 so if we go on writing like this a e i i o o u like this if we go on writing like this how many subsets we will get from this particular set you will get 32 subsets okay now what is the formula 2 power n so what should you remember these two very important an empty set is a subset of all sets and a set is a subset of itself you should not uh, forget this one and also the formula number of subsets that is equal to 2 power n okay okay always we can represent uh, a set with the help of a closed curve okay suppose if i write like this 1 2 3 4 i am if i represent a set in this way do you know what does it mean and let us name it as a this is set a so do you know what is the meaning of this here you should understand that this number 5 is outside this closed curve that means 5 is not as not an element of the set a one is an element of a two is an element of a three element of a four element of a of a but five is not an element of a so with the help of closed curve you can represent a set so if you want to represent the relationship between the sets okay this is a set so if you want to uh, show the relationship suppose in your school some students are selected for cricket team we want to show that school is a universal set there because from the school only the cricket team is selected so we have to represent uh, that one the cricket team and also the uh, school we want to show the relationship between the cricket team and the school how we will show it we can represent the school as a rectangle this is the universal set what is this one the universal set is mu and this is a cricket team because cricket team is selected from your skin school only understand so this represent this diagram represents the cricket team out of your school so your school is represented by mu here the numbers member of your school is represented by mu and the students those who are selected for the cricket team is selected shown by this closed the curve so always this type of representation is known as venn diagram okay what is it is venn diagram so we can show the relationship of the sets with the help of venn diagram what is venn diagram it is a way of representing the relationship between the sets how can you show the sets we can show the sets with the help of the closed the curves and if you want to show the relationship of the sets what we will use we will use the venn diagram how we will use the venn diagram with the help of a rectangle and the closed the curves okay let us take uh, the set a that contains three students roger ramu and ravi what is the speciality they are absent on tuesday so these are the students so those are absent on uh, tuesday and the b uh, ramu preeti and the hanif so these are the people those are absent on wednesday okay here we can observe uh, ramu this fellow he is absent on uh, tuesday and also on Wednesday. Okay. If uh, here another question is asked, we have to find out the number of so the students 
who are absent on either Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, how will you represent? Means either Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, when you are writing like that, these all numbers, these people are absent on Tuesday. If these are absent on Wednesday. But only Ramu is absent on both the days. So either Tuesday or Wednesday is such. How will you represent that set? You will represent it by writing Ramu's name only one time. Okay, like this. Roja, Ramu, Revi. Again, we won't represent Ramu because either Tuesday or Wednesday is asked. Okay, now. So, no need of writing Ramu's name. Uh, double time or to get uh, repeated. So when we are writing this type of question, it's called a union. We are combining these two sets. So we won't repeat the elements. Roja, Ramu, Revi, Preeti and Hanif. So these are the numbers present, uh, absent either when it's Tuesday or so what do we call K? K we call as the union of sets. So what is the union of sets? The combination of two sets. Okay. So total number of T, number of elements we have to write down without repetition. If there is repetition, the same element like the same element are uh, there repeating you should write it only one time. Okay, now that is A union B. We can represent this K is known as A union B. Okay, we will go on with another example. Action. Okay, we have to find out A union B here. Union is always represented by this cup symbol. Okay, now A union B. We have to read it as A union B. Okay, here the elements are uh, a, 2, 5, 6, 8. Always the elements should be separated by commas. Okay. So, the elements of A are 2, 5, 6, 8. And B, 5, 7, 9, 1. So, what is asked? We want to find out A union B. How we will write A union B? Very, very simple. Write down all the uh, elements in both A and B without repetition. We should not repeat it. So, 2, 5, 6, A. Now, see, 5 is repeating in B. So, no need of writing B again. Sorry, sorry 5 again. So, leave that 5 and write the remaining one. 7, 9, 1. We can show it in the Venn diagram also. The same one we can represent. This is a universal set. We will represent the universal set by mu. Let us show A. What are the elements of A? 2, 5, 6, 8. But we know that we have to observe. Is there any common element of A and B? Yes, there is a common element. A is common. 5 is common. So, common elements should be written in the common part. So, we take it as A and this is B. Okay, now. So, see, 5 is common. We will write 5 here, the common number. Remaining numbers A, 2, 6, 8. And B, what is there? 7, 9, 1. 7, 9, 1. So, this total is A union B. What is it? A union B. This shaded portion is A union B. So, in this way, we can show the, show the relationship of that to by Venn diagram also. Okay. Okay. Now the next concept is intersection of sets. The union of sets means the total number of elements from A and B. Okay. Now. Uh, if there are any repeating elements, we will write it only one time. Then what is intersection? Suppose in the previous example, Ramu is a fellow he was absent on both the Tuesday and Wednesday. So, Ramu, he is absent on Tuesday and also 
ups and downs minus y. So when we say about the intersection, he is common in both of the sets. So Ramu is the set of intersection. That means we will represent it by a intersection b like this. So when we write Ramu, uh, the previous example, a intersection b is set to Ramu. Okay, let us uh, take about this example. Here set A is 5, 6, 7, 8. And set B is 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, then which elements are common in both? Okay, uh, here you can observe that 7 and 8 are common in both. Okay, 7 is in set A and in set B. And 8 is in set A and set B. So A intersection B is nothing but that element which are common in both. This is common elements is term 7 comma 8. Suppose A union B is asked from the same question. What can you write A union B? A union B is equal to set 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That will be A union B. Okay, this is called A union B. A union means all the elements. So what is A union? Here, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the union. So what is mean by union? Union means all the elements. But uh, intersection means the common elements. Don't forget that one. Intersection means uh, common in both. You can show in Venn diagram like this. Suppose this is the uh, universal set. And let it be A and let it be B. Okay. If there is any common element, you will write in this part. Okay. This is a part for writing the common elements. If there is no common elements, you won't write. Okay. Now, if there is any common element, this is a part for showing that one. And if there are no common elements, we will represent that one like this also. Okay. As two separate one means it is called a disjoint. There is no common elements. It means there is no common elements. Okay, see here this part shows the intersection part. See here, here a is equal to 5, 6. We will write 7 and 8 here. Okay, now in B, 7, 8, 9, 10. We will write 9 and 10 here. 7 and 8 is common. So this is the intersection part. So we have to shade this one. Understand? Okay, listen, this one set A, 1, 3, 5, 7 and set B, 2, 4, 6, 8. Is there any common element for both these? Okay, A intersection B is equal to 5 here. Okay, now, A union B is 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8. We can write by combining these two, we can write A union. But A intersection B will be represented, we will getting us 5 means empty set. Like this we can show. Otherwise we can show like this. There is no common element. In this case, we will show the Venn diagram like this. Okay. The disjoint set. This is A. What is A? 1, 3, 5, 7 and B 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, what does it mean? Both A and B are having no common elements. So, what is this? This, you know, let us learn about another concept that is equal set. Okay, see the example here. A is equal to, uh, for all X, such that X is a letter in the word assassination. Okay, and here, X is such that X is a letter in the word station. Okay, let us write A and B in the roster form. We will see what we will be getting. A is equal to. Okay, we will get. Uh, what are the letters of assassination? A and double S. As, as. So, this part is repeated. No. So, we have to write only one term A and one time S here. Because all other letters are repeat, repeated. So, A, then S, again I, N, they are more repeated. I, N, next you see, A, A again repeated now here. 
So, A, no need to write again. Next letter is T. T. Next one is I again repeated here. I is a repeated letter. Is O repeated? O is not repeated. So, O. See here, N again repeated. So, these are the letters that is derived from the word assassination. See, A, S, I, N, T, O. Only with the help of these letters, the word assassination is written. Okay, this is the roster form of this set builder form. Okay, let us see what is B. What is the roster form of B? Yet such that X is a letter in the word station. Let us write that also. Okay, yes, T, next, A, again T is coming. Should we write again T? No, because already came now. No need to write again. I. O. And N. Okay, look at these. A and B. A. Right? In both. S in both. T in both. I in both. O in both. N in both. Is there any other letters remaining in both A and B? Not there. Right. So, here when you observe, every element of A is an element of B. Every element of B is an element of A. That means, A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Okay, we can write like this. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then we can say that A is equal to B. That means equal set. A and B are equal. Means it is known as equal set. Okay, this is the last concept of this lesson. In the next video, we will go through the problems related to all the uh, concepts we have discussed in this video. Okay, now the last one is difference of sets. Means uh, we have to take away one set from another set. So here A minus B means B should be taken away from A and B minus A. That means A should be taken away from B. It's very clear. A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, I have represented the diagram also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And why did I write 4, 5 in this intersection part? Because 4 and 5 is also in B. 4, 5 is common in both. Okay, now. So, uh, B is 4, 5, 6, 7. So, in this, 1, 2, 3, this part is A minus B. Why it is A minus B? Because 4, 5 is also coming in B. No need to think about 6, 7. 6, 7 are the elements of B. So, no need to uh, think about that one when we are talking about A minus B. We are talking about A minus B. So, only when we are talking about A minus B, the element should only be in A. That should not be in B. See here, 4 and 5, they are in A, but they are in B. Okay, are you following? This is the uh, part many people, many children make a mistake. A minus B and B minus A. So, A minus B means any terms or any elements which are repeating in B that you cancel and remaining elements you let show. Okay, so here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This one is repeating. You see, 4, 5 is repeating. They are coming into B. So, A minus B is the other terms. 1, 2, 3. So, what is A minus B? A minus B is the elements which are only in A. It should only be in A. That means it should not be in B. Why didn't we take 4 and 5? Because they are in B. Why didn't we take 6 and 7? Because they are the terms of elements of B only. 
not of A, why should we take away 6 and 7? No need to consider. We have, we have to take away B from A. Anybody from B is here? Yes, from B, anybody is here? Yes, 4 and 5 is here. That you take away. And remaining part you write down. So can you say what is B minus A? B minus A. That means A should be taken away from B. So B is 4, 5, 6, 7. 4 and 5 is common. They are in A also. So that should be removed. Remaining part. This shaded part. That is B minus A. So B minus A is nothing but 6, 7. Here this shaded part is A minus B. So this is the representation for A minus B. Venn diagram. And this is for uh, B minus A Venn diagram. So see here. So for B minus A. What we have to do? We have to take away any terms of B in A. That should take away. So 4 and 5, that is in A. So that should be removed. So other terms, which are the other terms? 6 and 7. Did you understand? Okay, when we are doing the exercise, we will go through all the problems. Then you will uh, understand the concept more better. Okay? So thank you for watching. And we will meet in the next class. Bye.